What is up guys? This is Ridge Gets Real here. Thank you for joining in today's video. We are going to be going over nine dark web pedophiles that will leave chills down your spine. There is no uh, particular order for this list. So with that being said, let's get into it. At number nine, we have Kyle Fox. Kyle Fox of Epsom Surrey filmed depraved child pornography videos featuring two children, a boy aged four to five and a girl who he began abusing at the age of 10 months old until she was three. Videos of the abuse were posted onto a dark web file sharing site. One of his videos came to the attention of the National Crime Agency. Police noticed a distinctive wristband in the video and got a speech analyst to examine the voice. This helped the police identify the perpetrator of these horrific crimes as Kyle Fox. When police raided his home, they found him in bed with the five-year-old boy who was naked. He was, of course, arrested on spot. Police discovered 13,000 indecent photos and videos of the children on his computer, including images of them in bondage gear. 4,743 images were in Category A, being the most serious kind of abuse. In some of the images and videos, the children were also drugged. Fox admitted to abusing the children and videoing it, but he claimed he didn't upload any of it to the dark web himself, but that someone else stole his memory stick and hacked him. However, evidence shows otherwise. In reality, he uploaded over 6,000 videos onto the website so he could gain credits and get access to other child pornography videos. Somehow, out of all of those videos, the National Crime Agency just luckily happened to come across one. On March 1st of 2019, he was sentenced to 22 years in prison for his abuse. At number 8, we have Shannon McCool. From 2011 to 2014, South Australian child care worker Shannon McCool, under the pseudonym Ski, administered a global dark web child pornography site by the name of The Love Zone. The site had over 45,000 members worldwide, and they were all required to post child pornography videos regularly in order to stay on. Users were ranked according to the originality and amount of material that they posted. If they did not meet these demands, they were demoted or even removed entirely from the site. McCool climbed the ranks of the site to the point of head administrator by frequently producing his own abuse videos. The horrifying post showed the abuse of at least seven children, and six of whom were entrusted into his care by the state. The youngest victim was only 18 months old, and the oldest was only three years old. McCool was arrested on June 10, 2014 by Queensland police. After the arrest, authorities secretly took over the site and worked to track down other members such as Lux, a.k.a. Matthew David Grimm, who was a VIP member, as well as Richard Huckle. McCool was sentenced in 2015 at the age of 33 to 35 years in prison, but it was reduced by three years after he helped Danish authorities catch other predators. At number seven, we have Matthew David Graham. Matthew David Graham, otherwise known as Lux on the dark web, is the creator of the Pedo Empire, a collection of dark web CP sites. Two of these sites stood out for their level of cruelty involved called Hurt to the Core and Love to the Core. These sites promoted Hurt Core, a form of child pornography dedicated to not just sexual abuse, but violent physical torture. This type of child pornography is so extreme, it is even hated by other pedophiles, as was Lux. Some of the notable things Lux did was give advice to a British man working in a home for intellectually disabled children on how to get away with abuse, encourage a Russian man to record himself kidnapping, raping, and murdering a five-year-old girl, and video it, as well as leak parts of Daisy's Destruction, a horrifying four-part pay-per-view series of videos created by someone who will be mentioned later on the list. Uh, that depict three girls being abused, with the youngest being 18 months old. Lux leaked the video, hoping it would bring more attention to his site. Thankfully, due to him doing this, it brought the once pay-per-view-only video series to the police's attention, and would lead to the creator's arrest. In, in August 2014, Graham himself was finally arrested, and in 2016, was sentenced to 15 years in prison. 
Next at number six, we have Christopher Grief. Christopher Robert Grief, also known as Mookie, is not only a furry who's in the uh, scat, urination, and vomit kinks, as well as being a plushophile, meaning someone who has, has sex with stuffed animals, but is also a depraved dark web pedophile and zoophile. He frequented dark web sites such as Matthew David Graham's Hurt to the Core, where he would make posts about his desire to rape, torture, and murder toddlers, babies, and animals. Just to give you a glimpse of what I'm talking about, here is an, ex an excerpt from one of the comments he made to a thread from Hurt to the Core. Quote, I'd like to ass rape a newborn girl right after she comes out of mommy and is still attached. He he. He would also view and upload child pornography onto these dark websites. He even uploaded a video of himself torturing and raping a rat onto one of these dark web forums. When a search warrant was executed on Grief's home in 2014, he waived his Miranda rights, practically admitting to everything. Among other things, he told the FBI that he used Hurtcore sites to download and upload CP under the username Mookie, identified excerpts of excerpts of his post as being made by him, told police a video could be found on his computer of himself torturing a rat, and that he liked to have sex with stuffed animals. One of the things the police found on Grief's computer was a video of a three-month-old baby being abused. On June 15, 2017, Grief pleaded guilty to receiving child pornography in interstate and foreign commerce. On January 24, 2018, he was sentenced to eight years in prison with time served. He is currently free. And in at number five, we have Matthew Folder. Matthew Falder, a Cambridge University postdoctoral researcher and lecturer, was living a double life as a sexual sadist who blackmailed victims and uploaded content of them onto the dark web. His perversion started when he was just a student. He would install hidden cameras in his parents' and doormates' restrooms as well as public restrooms. He then used his tech skills to identify the public restroom victims and would threaten to upload it onto their social media using fake accounts. If they didn't do as he said, which he did do to at least one victim, uploading a video of them using the restroom to Facebook. Folder later changed strategies and began using fake identities. Folder used several personas to blackmail victims, but he most commonly used the Liz persona, that of a young female charcoal artist. As Liz, he communicated with teen girls and offered to pay them for topless images, saying he needed them as inspiration for future paintings. However, once the victim sent the images, the trap was set, and Folder would demand more images, threatening to send them to everybody they knew if they refused. The more images the victim sent, the worse the blackmail would become. Victims would live in constant fear of the images being sent out and had to routinely check their computers to see if Folder had demanded more images or videos. What they didn't know was that Folder was already posting them onto the dark web. Folder forced one victim into eating dog food on all fours from a dog bowl, licking toilet seats, and eating used tampons. And he forced a father into raping his own young child. These are just two examples of the many sadistic demands Folder would ask of his blackmailed victims. He, like Grief, frequently used Matthew David Graham's site, hurt to the core to share abuse material, and even started his own thread on it called Need Advice for Blackmailed Girl. After a five-year investigation on June 21st, 2017, while working his office job at Birmingham University, Folder was arrested. Folder was sentenced to 32 years in prison, but recently had it reduced to 25. At number four, we have Richard Huckle. British man Richard Huckle abused up to 200 children from 2006 to 2014, starting at the age of 19 years old when he went uh, to Asia for a teaching gap year. His first recorded crime took place on a trip to, to Cambodia, where he raped two sisters, a four-year-old and a six-year-old. He soon decided to officially move to Malaysia and enrolled in a program to become a certified English teacher. Malaysia is where the rest of the abuse took place. Huckle posed as a devout Christian freelance photographer and used his English teaching certificate to get access to Malaysia's children in schools, churches, and orphanages. Huckle would give the children drugs and alcohol and then filmed himself raping them. 
Huckle posted the horrific content to dark web sites like Shannon McCool's The Love Zone. His youngest victim was a six-month-old baby. Huckle even wrote a manual on how to get away with pedophilia for fellow pedophiles to read. After authorities arrested McCool and gained access to The Love Zone, they had to make a choice. They could either close the site so no more abuse was encouraged, or they could run it themselves. They decided to run the site themselves for a short time so they could track down its most prolific users, and one person that stood out due to the number of victims was the man that they soon identified as Huckle. Authorities learned he was coming back home to spend Christmas with family, uh, and he was arrested at the Gateway Airport on December 9th, uh, sorry, December 19th, 2014. He eventually pleaded guilty in April 2016 to 71 out of 91 charges that he originally pleaded not guilty to and was sentenced to life in prison. However, on October 13th, 2019, he was brutally murdered by fellow prisoner Paul Fitzgerald at Full Sutton Prison in East Yorkshire. Next, we have Peter Scully. Peter Scully, a crooked Australian businessman who fled to the Philippines in 2011 after stealing millions from investors, is without a doubt one of, if not the worst, pedophile ever caught by law enforcement. While in the Philippines, Scully acquired two girlfriends, Carmen Alvarez and Lizelle Mergallo, and would have them go out and get street children for him. Once the children were brought back, Scully and his girlfriends would do the most vile acts imaginable to them and video it for his pay-per-view-only website called No Limits Fun. The most notorious of his creations is Daisy's Destruction, a four-part series made in 2012 which shows three girls, 12-year-old Cindy, 9-year-old Liza, and 18-month-old Daisy being abused in some of the worst ways imaginable by Scully and his girlfriends. Contrary to internet myth, there were no deaths in the Daisy's Destruction series. Daisy and Liza were both rescued, though Daisy cannot have kids and is still suffering constant nightmares due to what happened, as I'm sure Liza is too. 11-year-old Cindy's body, however, was found in one of Scully's rented homes. She was allegedly strangled by Scully after talking to neighbors. Police also found that a bolo knife had been inserted into the little girl's anus. Later in 2013, Scully had Alvarez bring him back to cousins aged 9 and 12 to one of their rented homes. Scully then drugged, raped, and tortured the cousins, as well as forced them to dig their own graves. Luckily, cousins were freed by Alvarez, however, after five days when she saw them in dog chains and began to feel remorse. They went to the police, and Alvarez was arrested on spot. Scully and Mergallo fled the scene and continued to make child pornography of even more victims. While police were searching for Scully and Mergallo, Lux, a.k.a. Matthew Graham, had leaked Daisy's destruction onto Hurt to the Core to get more publicity onto its site, and it came into the d direction of the police. When both investigations came together, it led to the arrest of Scully on February 20th, 2017, and Mergallo was arrested two years later in January 2017. She had been posing as a fitness in instructor and was living her best life with Scully's money. She was allegedly continuing to recruit victims for No Limits Fun while Scully was in jail. In the end, all three got life in prison. And at number two, we have Jordan Parnham. South Yorkshire pedophile Jordan Parnham got the National Crime Agency's attention when he posted online that he was going to live stream himself sexually abusing a toddler. The date for the stream was set for January 30th, 2019. That information was then passed to the South Yorkshire police, who, after managing to trace his real identity through his online alias, raided his home almost a month later, on February 22nd, 2019. Police found a ton of child pornography on his phone, including a rape video of a toddler. And while they found no evidence of it being live-streamed, he did admit to distributing the video to a group of like-minded people on the dark web. They also discovered he had a another victim, a young boy under the age of eight, that he had abused 12 months prior. Parnham was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of eight years. 
Last, we have James Lockhart. James Lockhart of Brandon, Florida, a licensed paramedic between March 2016 to February 2018, produced a depraved four-part series of videos showing the rape of his daughter, starting at the age of a year old, and distributed them onto a dark web forum, using the usernames Hardwood and Strangewood. In his horrific abuse videos, he had signs showing the name of the forum as well as his aliases on the forum, hoping to gain more notoriety among the pedo community on the forum and the dark web in general. Beyond this, he bragged about abusing another one-year-old child as well. Lockhart also had a large personal child pornography collection. As a matter of fact, when a search warrant was executed by Homeland Security at his home, authorities found 43 videos and at least 4,000 images of child pornography on devices owned by Lockhart. Some of the contents were other abuse videos and images of his baby daughter outside of the main four-part series. Lockhart's arrest was part of the Homeland Security investigation, codenamed Operation Test Pilot, where they attempted to infiltrate high-level child pornography sites and rings. On March 26th of 2019, at the age of 31, he pled guilty and was sentenced to a maximum of 70 years in prison for the production, distribution, and possession of child pornography. All right, guys, Ridge Gets Real here. Thank you for listening. If you would like me to go into more detail on any of these cases I haven't talked about already, feel free to comment below if it even allows you to. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you. See you guys later.